Good afternoon. My name is Aaron Barron and it is my esteemed honor and privilege to speak on behalf of the class of 2020 as senior class president. Before I begin, I would like to extend my warmest virtual greetings and gratitude to everyone in attendance here today for Grey Neck North High's commencement ceremony. Thank you to Dr. Holtzman, Dr. Krauss, Mr. Levine, and Ms. Hugo for their diligence over the last four years to maintain the complex inner workings of our shared home on Polo Road. Thank you, Dr. Prendergast, members of our central administration, and the admirable Board of Education members for making the Grand Neck Public School System a place of academic excellence. Thank you to our beloved faculty and staff who make Great Neck North a cornerstone for growth both in and out of a classroom setting. To Mr. and Mrs. Rice, I truly cannot begin to thank the both of you enough for the sacrifices and time that you have invested into our class. And of course, thank you to our parents who not only consistently supported our endeavors, but provided us with the love to motivate and drive us to this point. At this time, I ask you to join in the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be recited by Ju Ha Yoon, and the Star Sangled Banner, which will be sung by Alex Musazade. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave thank you juha and alex at this point you may have realized one of two things one you're a confused South High student that is now slowly realizing he or she accidentally clicked on the wrong link to get to this ceremony. In which case, uh, dude, you better get going. Your ceremony started hours ago. More likely, you have realized that having a graduation like this is oddly fitting for the untraditional class that we are. We've had changes in administration, drastic shifts in security measures, numerous class advisors, and multiple student government modifications. In fact, I'm the fourth president that our grade has had. We've always known, even before our senior year escaped us, that life is unpredictable. Life is scary. And in pure Great Neck North spirits, I can confidently say, life is geege. But given where we are now, I cannot blame any of you for viewing the glass as half empty. In all truth, these last couple of months have felt like there was only one droplet of hope left in our glasses. But to show you that there's much more hope than that, I'd like to share three stories to put our last few months at Great Neck North High into perspective. The first story I'd like to share is about Chris Deer, the 2020 Louisiana Teacher of the Year and National Teacher of the Year finalist. Like us, Mr. Deer knows what it's like to have his senior year of high school wrecked by a major crisis, Hurricane Katrina. Mr. Deer is a part of the class of 2005, or it has more sadly been dubbed the class of Katrina. On a random Friday afternoon, Mr. Deer left his high school, not knowing that he would not return for years. He finished school in a different state and his senior experience was left in shambles. In a heartfelt letter addressed to the class of 2020, he inspired them by saying that there is no pandemic strong enough to silence you or dent the passion of your generation. Mr. Deer's words of encouragement remind us to hold on to our passion. The next person I would like to talk about is Fred Voss, who lived what he described as a very wonderful, inclusive life until Hitler rose to power. His education, like many other facets of his life, came to an abrupt halt when his principal gathered all the Jewish students together and told them that they must leave the school. In the following six years, Voss was beaten by members of the Hitler Youth and forbidden from living his normal life. The family home and textile store were destroyed and his father was sent to a concentration camp for two months. In exchange for everything they owned, 
Fred's mother arranged for them to go to England and eventually the United States. He joined the US Army and went to France as a combat engineer and translator. He met his wife Ilza in London and the two were happily married for 73 years until Voss's passing last year. Virtually, the one thing Voss was missing from his life was a high school diploma. In 2012, at 92 years old, Voss accepted a diploma from Lansing High School on the condition that he could do so in remembrance of the Jewish children that were killed during the Holocaust. Voss's courage and golden heart remind us to stay strong no matter what life throws at us. I'd like to end on a more personal note with the story of my father, Michel Barron. Unfortunately for my father, his senior year fell during the height of the Iranian Revolution. In what seemed to be the blink of an eye, his entire world permanently changed. While his former classmates were turning their tassels, he was escaping his homeland, never to return. While others spent their last few days in school, he kept close to his mother and father, who he wouldn't see in person for over 10 years. While everyone seemingly turned the page to a new chapter in their lives, my father struggled to learn about this foreign nation surrounding him. Of course I am biased, but I would like to think that my father's unorthodox path in life proved to be tremendously rewarding. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here giving this long-winded speech. He reminds us that there are wonderful things to be found in the unknown. And thus, class of 2020, there is my message to you. These three men are living proof of the spirit that we as a class must embody. Their success in life speaks volumes to their ability to find solace in places that they may have never envisioned. It does not take overcoming Hurricane Katrina, waiting over seven decades to graduate, or fleeing from your mother country to know that this is still very much our narrative in our year. We must refuse to let this pandemic define our time at Great Neck North, and we must always work hard to define ourselves. We are New York strong, Great Neck tough, and class of 2020 special. Nothing can convince me otherwise. Thank you all for these phenomenal last four years. Please welcome Emma Sassuni, Senior Class Vice President. Hi everyone, I'm Emma Sassuni, the Vice President of the Class of 2020. I am beyond proud to have served the Class of 2020 these past three years. The past three years in office have taught me the importance of good leadership and a snazzy slogan. I've learned to lead through challenges, disappointments, and success. On this journey, I've learned a lot, not only from my classmates, but also from Dr. Holtzman, who has demonstrated that influential leaders inspire through example and are honest, passionate, resilient, and accountable. During periods of unrest, leaders restore the balance. I think we can all agree Dr. Holtzman has been that leader. Reaching out to us every single school day since quarantine started, that's 62 days by the way, Dr. Holtzman has inspired us and guided us through the mayhem of coronation. He's focused us on how we can learn from this unique experience. I clipped a few quotes from his daily emails. Dr. Holtzman reminds us to accept every challenge, to strive for greatness, and to honor our community. During a very untraditional senior year, he wishes us comfort on difficult days and beauty for our eyes to see. But of course we can't forget Dr. Holtzman before quarantine. Jam sessions during Friday morning lobby music, fist bumps in the hall. We are so appreciative. Well, this has been quite a conclusion to your first three years here at Great Neck North. Your resilience is very much recognized and we are grateful for the leadership you've demonstrated. Your presence in our lives reminds us that we matter and that the class of 2020 will be remembered. Thank you. Sorry I'm chirping, ESAS for our class out, and now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Holtzman. Hello class of 2020. Speeches often contain messages of changing the world and you are our future leaders. And while the sentiment is true and designed to be encouraging, graduates are often left with questions and uncertainty. I thought I would take a different approach with the class of 2020. When we observe and think about the challenges in our world, specifically the global pandemic and relationships between all members of our country, we are left with many uncertainties. Maybe we do not all have all the answers right now, and maybe that is okay. Maybe this time has been a life lesson. Maybe we've realized the importance of gratitude towards each other and appreciation for what we have and empathy for those who do not. Maybe it has lit a spark within you that has ignited self-reflection into the person that you are can be and will be. Maybe it has guided you to revisit the good you have done over your years here at Great Neck North High. Maybe it has caused you to question decisions you've made. Maybe it presented an opportunity to apologize and make amends. Maybe it allowed you to find forgiveness. Maybe it allowed you to accept you for you. Maybe it has led to the discovery of yourself. And maybe you want to volunteer and serve others. 
Maybe you realized you were more capable of facilitating positive change than you realized. This is the moment in time that will move us forward as individuals and as a country. And maybe we should embrace the opportunity to evolve as individuals and be a driver for social change within society. Your lives are surrounded by people whose job it is to influence you. How can you best be of service to your community with the influence you have? The importance of influence and using it responsibly, with maturity, and with an understanding of others should not be overlooked. In our time together, I hope you have taken away the importance of messages of community, hope, and kindness. To the graduates, I wish you the best and I am hopeful that you will discover some of these answers as you begin the next phase of your journey. In that spirit, I leave you with the words of President John F. Kennedy. As we express gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Since 1993, each graduating class has been given the responsibility to plan their graduation ceremony from beginning to end. Together with their class advisors and with Mr. Gildon's oversight, they make all decisions about what happens on their graduation day. They reflect on their experiences in the Great Neck schools, their relationships with their peers and their teachers, and they decide how they want to share this last experience together as a class with all of us. And given the circumstances that we have faced since March, clearly this has not been an easy task. The class of 2020 recognizes that to be the top ranking scholars at the John L. Miller Great Neck North High School is something that is quite remarkable when you consider the depth and breadth of courses that all of our students are challenged with. And so, we are honored on behalf of the class of 2020 to introduce to you the salutatorian of this year's graduating class. Congratulations to Judah Nuriel. And the top ranking scholar, the valedictorian of the class of 2020, congratulations, Raymond Lynn. Each year, the class officers ask members of the class to submit speeches that they would like to recite at commencement. And then the officers and advisors choose the speeches without knowing who submitted them. Although most schools follow the tradition of inviting the valedictorian and salutatorian to speak, our graduation is unique in that even they have to submit speeches for consideration. This year, for the first time in recent memory, the selected speakers are indeed the salutatorian and valedictorian, and we'll be hearing from both today. First, please welcome Jude and Aurelian. Senior Class Salutatorian. Hello, my name is Judah Nurielian. In these confusing and troubling times, I reflect back on our high school years as a symphony, with a sonata form motion pulling us through in exposition, development, recapitulation, and a coda. In that regard, we start with our slow intro and exposition to high school, freshman year, nervous and clueless, wandering around the halls in sloth-like, mindless bliss. The themes that dominate North High's culture are first revealed to us. Mr. Kaplan's Million Dollar Check, Fashion Show, Battle of the Classes. As much as North is an educational experience, it also remains a process of maturation. In that respect, sophomore year acted as our movement into the development of our symphony, a new year punctuated with novelty. The novelty of an, our new principal, Mr. Holtzman, the novelty of increased academic rigor in the form of many people's first honors or AP class, and most importantly, the novelty of increased responsibility, no longer being the youngest students in the school. Here, we learned about acting as role models for the grades below us, setting the example for what should and shouldn't be emulated. Junior year was the recapitulation of our symphonic dances. Classes became standardized tests and studying instantly became customary. More, while the seniors began to loosen up because of senioritis, we, the class of 2020, hit our stride. A unified grade, we came through the same school doors, charging together towards our dreams and our ambitions. The nervous freshman morphed into the confident junior that doesn't fear school, but rather embraces it, understanding its fundamental impact on his formation. The same themes from freshman year ring true, but we, the audience, started cashing in on Mr. Kaplan's million dollar check. The coda of the symphony is an odd one. 
we have seen a new principal, new security measures, new assemblies, and most importantly, new students or peers that have blossomed into their young adult selves. Our senior year has also been fraught with fear, with many students stressing about college admissions and a deadly pandemic that has forced us to close movie theaters, sports leagues, and even our school. We have remained headstrong amongst these challenges, and it is now that we reflect on our experiences and look to the future, not just the seniors, but as the graduating class of 2020. We, the class of 2020, constantly look at the future as the object of our desires from one assignment to the next. But today, we take this moment to slow down. We have been cultivating the future for all of high school, and now we begin to see the fruits of our labor. Now we can see that this symphony of high school is not one that we experienced, but rather one we have composed. One of Beethoven's greatest achievements is his extension of the coda, which diverged from this sonata form. Breaking the boundaries of composition, he took this finale and extended it, making it like a second development, just as we are going to extend our symphony to the end of our lives, developing our own themes and motifs in the process of our own development of greatness. We are graduating to newer ideas and newer moments, Perhaps we may follow classical composers like Mozart and Haydn and go straight into the second movement. Maybe we shall take Beethoven's example and change the traditional forms. Or maybe we will even take inspiration from modern music, the Lil Wayne's and Kanye's who are constantly pushing boundaries and making mu music that not just speaks to our world, but also changes our world. All of these composers inspire us so that when we write our compositions, we will do it in our own unique way, never defined by those around us, but rather defined by our spirit and our passion. Class of 2020, I urge you to forge your own path, compose your own peace, and ultimately create your own destiny. Thank you. Hello everybody. My name is Shana Zargari and I am the senior class secretary. During my time at North High, there's some moments that stick out to me specifically. One of these moments was when I went to go see a musical put on by the junior players during my junior year. I remember thinking of all of the intricate little details that went into such an impressive performance. Thought had to go into every moving piece, from the color of certain parts of the set to the exact distinct pitch some members of the ensemble needed to reach. All of these parts were together to form what was, in my point of view, a sensational product. The first time I met Superintendent Prendergast was during this specific musical. During intermission, I approached the superintendent with some of my friends and jokingly asked her for more snow days. However, when I sat down for the second part of the show, I thought about all of the moving parts that went into our district, and now Superintendent Prendergast is behind that curtain, organizing all of that detail to improve the experience of myself and so many others here in Great Neck. She works endlessly each day throughout the year to ensure that every piece is in place so that we as students can benefit from our schools and grow in numerous ways. She works hard to make sure every single aspect of our school is in order, from the type of floor tiles that line our halls, to the ways in which our school can be on the cutting edge of everything, to snow days, especially snow days. Superintendent Prendergast's work, along with the work of so many others, is what has allowed our district to serve as a model for so many other districts. Without further ado, it is my great honor to present the Superintendent of the Great Neck Public School District, Dr. Teresa Prendergast. Dear North High School graduates, well, students, today is your day. You made it. Of course, this is not exactly the graduation ceremony you envisioned, and the pandemic has certainly interrupted the final months of your senior year. Nonetheless, we are here with you today, albeit virtually, to celebrate and recognize all that you have accomplished. Never before has a graduating class been called upon to step into the future with more purpose, vision, passion, and hope. Over the past three months, you have certainly demonstrated a sense of determination and commitment. You've overcome obstacles that no other graduating class has ever encountered. Your perseverance during this unprecedented time in history sets the class of 2020 apart from all other graduating classes. 
While you will undoubtedly encounter additional challenges in the future, remember, challenges are what makes life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. You have the knowledge and the skills to find creative solutions for the challenges that lie ahead. During this period of time, we've also learned that we are able to stay connected, even when we are apart. Over the past few months, we all went through long stretches without seeing our family, our friends, and our loved ones. And yet, we managed to stay in touch despite the distance. As you prepare for the next stage of your life, whether going away to college or staying closer to home, remember to stay in touch with your loved ones. Call your parents. Share your life's moments with those who care about you. Congratulations to the graduates of the John L. Miller North High School. We are very proud of you and I join with the members of our Board of Education, Administration and Faculty in commending each one of you. Congratulations. I would like to congratulate all of the graduates of the class of 2020. It's been a pleasure. I'm here to present the Alan Gleitzman Award. The late Alan Gleitzman, a 1947 graduate of what was then Great Neck High School, was an entrepreneur who built a multi-million dollar television syndication business, selling it to focus on his time in philanthropy. Alan Gleitzman actively aided organizations devoted to education, civil liberties, human rights, and peace, and established scholarships at UCLA and his alma maters, Cornell University and Great Neck North High School. He established this award in 1988 to be given annually to a graduating senior. Gleitzman winners must place within the top 10% of their graduating class, uphold a high level of quality involvement in student activities, be dedicated to the school and the well-being of fellow students, and have a commitment to pursue further education on the college level. Extraordinarily principled and conscientious in everything that he does, this year's recipient defines and embodies the notion of school service, spirit, and intellectual engagement. Articulate and poised, he is a vibrant young man who will use his prodigious talents, drive, and intellect to make a positive impact wherever he goes and upon whatever he does. His kindness, respect for others, and team spirit make him a joy to be around, and his eagerness to learn, grow, and surpass challenges ensures that he will make the most of every opportunity. Exemplifying the notion of hard work and commitment, there is no question of the trail this young man has blazed in the North High community. An endless well of talent, the recipient of this year's Alan L. Gleitzman Award is Raymond Lynn. Congratulations, Raymond. Hey, my name is Raymond Lynn, valedictorian of the class of 2020, and I consider myself incredibly lucky to talk with you today. Like all of you, I saw this taking place on a stage in some massive auditorium with hundreds of family members watching from rows upon rows of seats. But here we are, watching in a beach parking lot or in our own homes, but still surrounded by family and friends, still listening to a class speaker. I'm not a big fan of speeches, and I'm probably not going to say anything too life-changing, so if you're willing to stick around, I'm just going to speak to you honestly for a second. Trust me when I say that our grade has been through a lot. I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say that none of us thought things could get any worse after we lost our fourth battle in a row. But I'm reminded of a particular physics teacher at North you've probably met or at the very least heard something about. On a day like any other, he decided to begin a little demonstration to teach a class about momentum. He gathered up the students, slightly chuckling to himself, as he brought them into the hallway and placed a lit candle at the other end. Hopping in a little red wagon, strapped with a fire extinguisher, he launched himself toward his destination with the intent to blow out the candle. Rocketing forwards, he somehow looked both ridiculous and admirable at the same time. Definitely a memorable sight to his students. But just as he was about to reach the candle, the extinguisher ran out of gas leaving him stranded only a few feet away from his goal. You know what he did? He got out of that wagon and slid across the floor to the candle, putting it out to the raucous laughter of his students as they watched on. Now we stand at the end of this year looking at the remnants of what we thought would be our greatest moment, our chance to blow out the candle. But as it turns out, our little red wagon has stalled. With that loss comes a new opportunity though 
we've all heard the near constant calls for people to stay strong, stay healthy, stay smart, and stay safe, and on and on it goes through the emails, the announcements, and the news. But I think we can do something more than just stay for the time being. Our last senior event left is to show the world that when things eventually settle down, the class of 2020 will hit the ground running. Even as the lives we imagine for ourselves begin to fall apart, we're not going to take this sitting down, just like we haven't before and just like we won't ever. I see examples of our grades resilience every day. Friend groups have been making Zoom calls in order to see each other more often and in order to stay close despite social distancing. Online study groups have formed for APs and remote learning, motivating all of us to maintain our work ethics despite how badly we might want a vacation. Recent events may have exposed some vulnerabilities and pushed us physically apart, but in many ways, however ironic it may be, I've seen us come together to support each other in response. Likewise, the teachers, the mentors, administration, and the faculty at North High have been there for us throughout our time here, and they deserve immense gratitude as well. We have them to thank for taking us from lost and competent freshmen to slightly less lost, almost competent seniors. In much the same way, our families have provided incredible guidance and support, and they've opened up all the opportunities we've had so far. Throughout high school, and especially during recent events, they've all made every effort to enable our success. Let's show that appreciation as we celebrate this achievement, as it never would have been possible without all of their help. Lastly, thank you for taking the time to listen to me and filling my last four years at North High with unforgettable experiences. I get that things aren't as we expected right now, and we have a right to be frustrated. But there's always hope for better times, and knowing our class will find those moments. Honestly, that should be the tagline of our year. I can say with pride that I'll be alongside the class of 2020 as we face yet another challenge, the likes of which has never been seen before and overcome it nevertheless. It's the first chance in our lifetimes to show the world and just not just say, but prove that there's absolutely nothing that we can't handle. Even if our extinguishers seem to be running low and our spirits occasionally even lower, I know that we'll gather up the rest of our momentum and find our way forward. Even if we have to slide across the floor to get it done. Thank you. I'm Kelly Chow and I've been the class speaker for the past three years. But what I've been for the past four years is a maggot. You may be wondering, what is a maggot? Well, a maggot is a musician that thrives off ruining Mr. Rakowski's sanity through the things they do in class. Trust me when I say this, there are many maggots in band and orchestra. I'm one of them. I'm super proud to be a part of the band and orchestra because everyone in there is talented and dedicated. Musicians come in the morning, during class, during a free period, and after school just to play music. Traditionally, it's been an honor for us to play at Tilla Center for graduation. However, because of our current situation, we won't be able to play. The seniors felt as though that we should still be able to give the gift of music and share it throughout the community because it's something that we love. On behalf of all of us, I'd like to thank Mr. Rakowski for being an amazing teacher and musician and for teaching us what the most important thing is, the downbeat. Speaking of which, I gotta go now because I can't miss the downbeat or else I'm a maggot. Bye, I hope you all enjoy. <laughs> Thank you.
Kumar, and I'm here to honor the career of Dr. Kraus. During this time of isolation, we've all had time to reminisce about the small random actions of people that added color to our daily routine at school. Throughout my years of high school, I have observed Doc's unwavering commitment to his students. When we walk through the doors of North High in the morning, Doc's smiling face is one of the first things that we see. When I would see Doc strolling through the commons between meetings, he would stop and chat with every student in his line of sight. It was a known fact that if we ever had a problem, Doc's office would be open for us. Whether as a biology teacher or a wrestling coach, a science department chairperson or an assistant principal, Doc has truly remained a man of the students. His dedication to learning about each student as they embark on their journey at North High is apparent to everyone in the North High family. During one of my free periods, I saw Doc in the hallway and had a lengthy conversation with him about college, and I was grateful for his words of encouragement. What was supposed to be a quick two minute chat evolved into a 10 minute meaningful conversation. After our talk, he told me he was going to be late for a meeting. And when I apologized, he remarked, no, this is great. It's a fun commercial break. One of Doc's famous quotes is the first step to success is showing up. Doc not only makes his presence known as our assistant principal, but go also goes above and beyond to show that he is truly interested. We can see him pop his head in classrooms for a quick laugh. We can expect him to be a judge at any science fair, listening enthusiastically to students' projects. And we can find him chatting with students in his office, filled with mountains of students' backpacks. Doc, your big heart has made a lasting impression on the Great Neck North family. Thank you and congratulations. Hello, my name is William Campos, and I'm so proud to be graduating from Great Neck North High School with you, Miss Hugo. First of all, I would like to thank you for everything that you have done for Great Neck North High School as a person, as a teacher, and for all your support to all ENL students in general. In these past four years, you show us that with hard work, we can always achieve our goals. For every detention that you give, we, really, we thank you because you show us that responsibility is important in our life. And for everything you give to us, we would really like to thank you and we're, we're going to miss you in these coming years. But we know that we also going to have a friend on you. And I would like to say thank you, Miss Hugo, for everything. I hope to see you soon. Greetings, everyone. My name is Izzy Hidasi, and I'm here to honor Kathy McAleer on the occasion of her retirement. I have had the pleasure of knowing Mrs. Mack as a teacher, mentor, and friend during my junior and senior year of high school. When asked to speak on behalf of Mrs. Mack, I was delighted and so grateful to be given the chance to do so. I first met Mrs. Mack when I registered for ASL, American Sign Language, at the end of my sophomore year, as her class was highly recommended. Prior to registering, I knew absolutely nothing about the language, the people, or culture of the deaf community. I quickly learned through her lessons that ASL was just as beautiful and interesting as any other language. Mrs. Mack also encouraged the study of deaf culture, embracing the idea that teaching students about a particular group's history and way of life was just as important as learning the language if you wanted to communicate with them. On a personal level, Mrs. Mack is one of the most grounded, humble, and fun-spirited teachers I have ever had. She lit up any class she entered and greeted everyone with kindness and respect. Mrs. Mack was always available for extra help and made sure to check up on her students on a regular basis. She was also there if you needed somebody to talk to about something on your mind or if you needed to hear a funny story. I look back on the time I told Mrs. Mack that I would be continuing the sign language curriculum in college and think about how lucky I was to have a teacher who cared about her students' futures. She responded to that statement with so much joy and a round of sign language applause. Mrs. Mack's devotion to her students and not one, but two schools will be forever cherished and can truly say that she will be missed sorely. Thank you for all that you've done here and please accept your virtual diploma. Hugs. Hello, my fellow graduates. My name is Sarah Frankel and I'm here to honor one of the true legends of Great Neck North High School, Susan Backus, on the occasion of her retirement. 
During the end of my junior year and the end of what would become my favorite course, AP United States History, Ms. Backus was posed the question of what identifies a true republic. One thing led to another, and what happened next was truly unforgettable. Ms. Backus grabbed the flag off the wall, and the entire class started chanting, God bless America, around the school. Her creative approach was matched by an unwavering passion for learning and teaching that couldn't help but make us all better. Any time Ms. Backus would hand back an assessment, I would wait with bated breath for the harsh criticism that would follow, but that did not happen. My pages were filled with comments, with suggestions about what could be improved. Ms. Backus always made herself available to work with students and to help them on their assignments and to go over tests, even during the quarantine. She would make a Zoom call for that student or any student who needed help. When it comes to education, she has a total commitment towards excellence. And the result is that she is one of the most amazing historians and educators I've ever known. As Dr. Krause said, she's a pure historian and takes tremendous pride in the fact that history is her love. When posed with the challenge, Ms. Babkis attacks it head on. Her hunger for knowledge is never satisfied. She personifies a pure commitment to excellence in everything she does. Ms. Babkis didn't just touch the hearts of those who she taught, she also touched the lives of her colleagues. Mr. Rago had this to say about Ms. Babkis. Sue pushed me to be better, learned and prepared, but she also gave me the freedom to become a better teacher. She treated me like a professional and that made me and others repay her with that trust. She allowed and encouraged me to learn new things, to try new ideas and methods, and to push the students. Dr. Holtzman shared that Ms. Babkis's thoughtful and insightful perspectives and insight on instruction, assessments, grading practices, mentoring, and professional developments fostered dialogue that has led the meaningful change in our school. Ms. Babkis, it was truly an honor to have been taught by you and changed by you. The thousands of students you have taught while at North are better learners and better people because of you. Your legacy at North will endure forever. Thank you and congratulations on your retirement. Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Bichupan and I'm senior class treasurer. Everyone being celebrated today has contributed to making the class of 2020 unique and memorable. Although we would like to have the opportunity to honor all of our classmates who made this class so special, the officers have decided to honor one student who we feel has dedicated so much of her time and effort to our class. We would like to take a moment to acknowledge this person and now present her with an award we called the Class of 2020 Dedication Award. Over the past four years, this person's creativity always instilled pride in our class. From making our incredible class shirts to contributing to the battle posters and banners freshman through senior year, this individual has always been our rock for our artistic needs, never quitting on us even when we lost. Always creative, generous, and passionate, we would like to thank and honor this year's recipient of the Class of 2020's Dedication Award, Anne Goldsmith. Thank you, Anne. I think it's safe to say that the Class of 2020 had a rocky start entering high school. Without a pep rally against freshman year and multiple class advisors freshman through sophomore year, we weren't necessarily starting off on the right foot. However, by our junior year, we finally got our savior, a new class advisor, Mrs. Rice. I may not have been in class office junior year, but even I could sense the new organization and leadership she provided for our class. I watched as more students participated in events or became more engaged from the sidelines. Mrs. Rice, you gave our class the confidence to be more united and to work hard at every school event, even if we didn't win. You always took into account every student's opinion and made sure we were heard. You went above and beyond to make our high school experience special. When you told the class officers that you were expecting a baby, we were so excited because if your time as advisor taught us anything, it is that this baby would have an amazing childhood with you and Mr. Rice's parents, especially as we all got to know him better when he joined as co-advisor for senior year. Mr. Rice immediately became our new go-to guy. He gained everyone's respect quickly decorating the upper hallway walls during spirit week that no one else could reach, and making sure everyone was focused during battle practices. Mr. Rice, you not only made us better students, but better people. You always made us see the bigger picture, looking at the glass half full even when many of us saw it as empty. 
As if taking care of an infant in quarantine isn't challenging enough, Mr. and Mrs. Rice, just weeks after having their baby Kinsley, put in an immense amount of effort into making this ceremony along with other celebratory events for our class happen. On behalf of the class of 2020, thank you Mr. and Mrs. Rice for being the ultimate dynamic duo. There is no other pair I would rather have leading our class. Now, it is my honor to introduce our senior class advisor, Mrs. Rice. Thank you for your words of introduction, Olivia. The senior class owes a debt of gratitude to President Aaron Barron, Vice President Emma Sassuni, Secretary Shana Zagari, Treasurer Olivia Bishupan, and Speaker Kelly Chow for their tireless efforts on behalf of the class of 2020. Mr. Rice and I are honored to have worked with each of you. I am grateful to have the opportunity to share my thoughts with you today. Many of you have probably thought about your graduation day from the very first moment you began your high school career at Great Neck North. I'll admit that when I was asked to serve as your class advisor, I too began thinking about this very moment. Most class advisors have four years of elections, meetings, and class events to reflect upon when addressing the senior class. After working with your class for two years, I can share that we had a groovy time decorating our 1960s themed hallway for homecoming. We sold more garlic knots than we could count on closed campus days. We danced through the senior fashion show and worked our way out of last place in Battle of the Classes. Ari Pencovici said, graduation is only a concept. In real life, every day you graduate. Graduation is a process that goes on until the last day of your life. If you can grasp that, you'll make a difference. Each day you make decisions that impact whether or not you will succeed. While the last few months were enough to make anyone feel defeated, it is important to acknowledge your conduct during this time. We are proud of the tenacity you displayed as you worked to navigate remote learning, participated in countless Zoom sessions, and completed projects without the normal cues and prompts of a traditional classroom setting. It is clearly not the second semester of senior year that you envisioned, and we would be remiss if we did not address what you missed the opportunity to do. You did not play Frisbee on the front lawn in the warm weather, nor did you participate in the spring sports season, senior cut day, Friday music in the lobby, saying good morning to Phil one last time, and no, you did not attend your senior prom. These are rites of passage, and we are sorry that you did not get to experience them. While you may grieve these losses, celebrate what you have gained, your adaptability, your resilience, and your ability to allow life to happen as you transition into the next phase of growth are all honorable qualities. The classes that came before yours left their mark on Great Neck North. Some might say they were a part of North's history. However, no group of students can say they were a part of global history. In Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical, Hamilton, George Washington recounts the story of his first command in the song, History Has Its Eyes On You. He fears that time will be a harsh judge of his actions. Washington cannot shape his legacy. Miranda's words suggest, you have no control who lives, who dies, who tells your story. I know that we can win. I know that greatness lies in you. But remember from here on in, History has its eyes on you. Truer words cannot be spoken about you, the historic class of 2020. You have demonstrated your strength and your ability to overcome unprecedented challenges. You have the ability to persevere when presented with hardship. The greatness that Washington sings of exists in each of you. The class of 2020 will continue to navigate the new normal and have the opportunity to build a better future. On behalf of Mr. Rice and myself, we wish you the best of luck on your next steps in your walk through history. Thank you. And now we've come to the moment you've all been waiting for, the presentation of diplomas.
William Campos. Thank you, Ankelin Campos. Elizabeth Boxer. Kayla Chan. Osha Kakam. Ariella Edelman. Alexis Asherian. Renee Agadon. Ellie Balazada. Abby Beldner. Aaron Barron. Aaron Amirian. Layla Shafian. Sherelle Van David. Kayla Asherian. Ami Ajaple. My name is Jong Hyun Choi. Kelly Chow. Brandon Chen. Stephanie Aravalo. Andrew Kagner. Rachel Breitbart. Wellington Chen. Roy Ben Joseph. Avitala Gajani. Rebecca Shirzada. My name is um, Javier Arevalo. Kelly Chung. Olivia Bichupan. Yehoshua Agelia. Jer Jeremy Benalevi. Yuliza Baides. Victor Chen. Jonathan Aziz. Ronan Bina. Eliza Badlow. Vera Cho. Uh, Adam Abitbo. Dylan Namdar. Amber Ng. Claudia Hakimi. Danielle Goodstein. Josh Gorgian. Ruben Alonso Franco Hernandez. Eric Cohen. Sarah Franco. Sean Eliassi. Amy 
Amy Delman. Rachel Gorgian. Sachita Gupta. Kayla Zare. Kevin Azare. Ariella Cohen. Brigitte Fulati. Ryan Elyon. Lauren Dilamani. Adina Etat. Don Gorgian. Yol Gasabian. Jake Hakimian. Lindsay Hannah Elnikave. Maya Garfinkel. Ann Goldsmith. Logan Domanian. Brandon Davuti. Lior Elias. Oren Cohen. Isabella Diani. Eliana Hakimian. Oren Diane. Brandon Farajola. Moshe Gabriel. Vanessa Niatian. Naomi Hakimian. Second Dong. Eric Hakimi. Daniel Guidon. Madison Kukhavim. Isabel Hadassi. Clark Lua. Clarence Law. Jordan Kashani. Daniel Koshlesan. Daniel Kashanian. Ariel Kashanian. Uh, Brian Lee. Ayush Bago. Mia Hernandez. Daniel Kashani. Yonatan Khalili. Alexis Hedvat. Sharon Kohavi. Emily Kagan. Jan Kaluta. 
Zoe Korshad. Raymond Lin. Kayla Kashinajad. Benjamin Kashapur. Aria Dylan Naeem. Shiv Karwal. Noah Kron. Olivia Liu. William Huang. Hanfu Lu. Jeremiah Jadidian. Jonathan Haravi. Annette Hopkins. Kenny Lee. Jace Kim. Gabriel Kang. Hee-Joon uh, Esther Huang. Jake Kimmelberg. Michael Jacobs. Nathaniel Hyman. David Kamali. Preeti Kumar. Kathleen Catches. Chloe Catches. Gregory Catches. Jacqueline Manellis. Chris Matos. Shane Maudlin. Kayla Monahemi. Ethan Moisinia. Sean Maher. Hemda Nicknam. Judah Nurielian. Alexa Martin. Alex Musazade. Brian Amdor. Ariel Misagia. Ariel Mueller. Uh -oh. Natasha Mafar. Yuro Nasir. Jackson Pan. Talia Paisner. Amit Malnick. Zoe Mafar. Ava Nazif. Mm. 
Nona, vai! Daniela, vai! Rachel Martini? Josh Oaken? Brian Kravish? Tanya Oranja? Nora Monaceri? Ben Okovetsky. Brandon Maligan. Mari Malul. Noah Waspader. Shay Ni. It's been Miranda. Gilad Menashe. Narissa Ng. Alison Gamis. Ashley Oheb Shalom. Arnawadia. Claire Pan. Gabriella Meradian. Benjamin Nazarian. Elliot Paymani. Sarfati Desiree Shokrian Shayna Soleimani Emma Sasuni Matthew Somach Daniel Sharabani. Arcus Pang. Sally Sarker. Monica Rodriguez. Sydney Sanchayo. Michelle Sagir Najad. Michelle Sabitfard. Rachel Rafaelov. Daniela Sharavan. Noah Sharbani. Luca Sharbani. Aaron Salahani. Megan Salahani. Sophie Roxar. Darius Skolnick. Justin Shoda. Jordan Ramanon. Sophia Shafizada. Samuel Saragazandi. 
Noam Ramanan. Henry Rodriguez. Miriam Salme. Jonathan Rayner. Alexandra Rubeni. Alia Shore. Shayna Zargari. Jordan Seidenberg. Sam Soberg. Yoni Pinsky. Daniel Sudge. Winston Riggs. Michael Shulian. Daniel Shahari. Jordan Pizer. Caroline Pizer. Abigail Rabani. Nick Reetbrook. Jake Sedegat. Abton Saburi. Ashling Key. Shirley Tola. Aaron Tuxel. Malka Yerushalmi. Greg Vidiello. Brian Tai. Danielia Haskell. Benjamin Taib. Alana Torkin. Talia Tarani. Juha Yoon. Jeffrey Zhang. Daniel Zhang. Emily Wooster. Monica Tai. Daniel Zituni. Oriel Zituni. Michael Zituni. Oh, you too. Katie Zhang. Matthew Su. Mark Su. Yes. 
Michael Veyman. Bianca Zernigian. Eitan Waisoki. Joseph David Volinsky. Jason Yao. Jacob Yazdan. Yushan Zhang. Even Yusafi. Audrey Agana. Jun Wei Zhang. Gabriella Wright. Figo Wang. It is our pleasure and honor on behalf of Great Neck North High School to present to you for the first time, the graduates of the class of 2020. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. We made it.
hi. I just want to say I love you guys and I hope to see everyone soon. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Wishing you the best of luck in the future. Yo, yo, this is your king speaking. Huge shout out to the class of 2020. Congrats, it's been a hell of a ride. Peace. Thank you to Jake Sedegat for making the iconic name B Chen. My name is Shane Modlin. My name is Benjamin Azari. I'm Daniel Fushasan. Congrats to the class of, of 2020. 2020. Perfect. Congrats, class of 2020. Best of luck in the future. Congratulations to the entire class of 2020. I wish everyone nothing but health, happiness, and success. Congrats for class of 2020. Wishing you guys all the best. Congratulations, class of 2020. Our future is in our hands now. Make the best of it. Congratulations to our class of 2020. We wish you all the best of luck in the future.